In Zendaya's new tennis movie, it looks like Tom Holland has a couple of challengers. Let's talk about this thing. What's up, my dude? Your friendly neighborhood Tony here. And as I do with all my movie reviews, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about challengers, who made it, what it's about, all that good stuff. Then I'll go over the things I did and did not like about the movie, my pros and cons. And finally, I'll let you know who I think challengers is for if anyone. If that kind of thing sounds cool to you and you want to keep up to speed on all the new big movies coming out, make sure you subscribe. In Challengers, Tashi, a former tennis prodigy turned coach, is married to a champion on a losing streak. Her strategy for her husband's redemption takes a surprising turn when he must face off against his former best friend and her former boyfriend. Challengers is a romance drama through the lens of a sport. It's written by, I think it's pronounced Justin Kuritskes. His name might not sound familiar to you, but if you are an old school YouTube person, you might remember a little video called Potion seller. <laughs> potion seller. I'm telling you, I need your strongest potions. Yeah, that one. This is the guy that created the potion seller video back in the day, and now he's writing movies. The movie is directed by Luca Guaranino. I think I said that last name right. I am terrible with names, but he's the guy that directed Call Me By Your Name, Suspiria, and Bones and All. Now Zendaya is starring in the movie, but she also has a producer credit, which is pretty dope. She's only got a couple of producer credits under her belt so far, so it's cool to see her expanding out there. It's in theaters this weekend, and it's rated R for some strong language, a bit of sexual content, and uh, even some, you know, dangly bits here and there and the movie runs about two hours and 10 minutes give or take now of course as i said it stars zendaya as well as josh o'connor who played prince charles in the crown i absolutely loved him in that and you have mike feist who was riff in west side story in the new version of west side story so pretty cool a few young but Pretty successful actors and actress, of course, in the lead roles. Okay, so before we get into my pros and cons, let me tell you my expectations coming into the movie so that way you know where I'm coming from. Now, I have to be honest, I, prior to this, had not seen any of Luca Guaranino's movies. I know, I know, they're super highly acclaimed critically. They just weren't movies that, at the time that they came out, that I was particularly interested in, so it kind of fell under the radar for me. But I will definitely get around to seeing some of them. They are absolutely on the list. That said, I did feel after watching the trailer that I knew more or less what the movie was going to be like. So if you've seen any of the trailers so far, you mostly know what you're getting yourself into here. Also, of course, I immediately love the entire main cast, so I was super excited to see what they did in the movie. And although I am not a tennis fan at all, really, I do always like to watch people try to achieve greatness, so I'm always down for a sports movie. So okay, let's go ahead and get into the pros, the things that I really loved about this movie. And I'm be honest, there's a lot. Immediately, as soon as the movie starts, the first thing that stood out to me was the editing. The way that they cut back and forth between characters and between what's going on. The way that during a game, a tennis match rather, they will follow the ball back and forth, sometimes going into a first person view, but other times just watching the people on the sideline as their eyes go back and forth. And it's almost like a tool for storytelling to kind of give you the idea of people or a person in particular waffling back and forth between these two characters. It's all really a part of the development of the story and the development of the characters, which is, I mean, pretty impressive. And aside from the editing, the second thing that stood out to me was the music. That music though? Yo, shout out to Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. They absolutely crushed it in this movie. Holy cow. The music is not subtle at all. It's super impactful and purposeful and dynamic and even abrupt at times. It really does a good job of building intrigue into what's going on with the character's psyche. This is really one of those movies where there's just so much beneath the surface for each individual character. And they do a good job of balancing that too. So it's not just some super heady, deep movie all the time. There's also some lighter moments sprinkled throughout, some genuinely funny moments, some really sweet or cute moments where you'll see characters kind of bumbling over themselves and falling for other characters. But then there's some real genuine exploration into these characters, into these people. I don't even want to say characters because they really feel so much more real than that. They feel genuine. They feel like people that you might know or that you might have been at various times in your life. I feel like this could all, I mean, really exist. And like any relationship, whether it's romantic or a friendship or something in between, it is so messy. And there are no heroes in the movie. Everyone is 
good in some ways and very flawed in other ways, you know, like normal humans. Honestly, there was a point in the movie where I just sat back and thought to myself, wow, people are trash. But even then, you feel for them all, which I think, yes, is a nod to Luca, but also a big nod to the writer, especially being that I think this is his first gig as a screenplay writer for a big motion picture. And that takes a lot of skill to be able to write characters that are so well-developed and so balanced. I also want to touch back on the cast itself. Again, I love Josh O'Connor and Mike Feist. I love Zendaya. And I feel like more and more as I see her in different movies and shows, she is just proving to be this wildly talented actress. I mean, she's the truth. And I feel like if we haven't already started talking about it, we should probably start including her in the conversations about who is the next big thing, you know, who is going to be in a couple decades, the next Daniel Day Lewis or Meryl Streep. I, I feel like she's got it, or at least she's on the right track. Also, last thing, last pro, this movie, as I mentioned earlier, is over two hours long. So for a drama that can feel a bit lengthy, but I'm going to tell you here, it didn't at all. I mean, as we got towards the end of the movie, I, I wanted to see more. I wanted to know what happened after the final scene. You know, there was no point in the movie where I was squirming in my seat and wanting to get up or felt like the movie dragged at any particular point. It was really moving at a great clip the entire time and I was entertained the entire way through. So bravo, Luca. Molto bene. And I definitely can't wait to go and watch some of his other movies that I missed. Now, all that being said, all those flowers that I've given to the movie, no movie is perfect, so let's talk about the cons. But before we do, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by you. That's right, I'm just a small independent channel here without any big corporate sponsors or anything like that. So just by watching the video, you're really helping me out. If you want to be super dope and show your support in the easiest possible way, do me a solid and like the video and maybe drop down in the comments and let me know what are your thoughts on Luca Guadagnino's work? What movie would you recommend that I go back and watch first? You can also now join as a channel member if you want to help support me financially or just subscribe for free if you want to keep up to speed on all the new big movies coming out. So either way, whatever you do, I appreciate it. All right, on to the cons. And this is really tough because genuinely I love this movie and it's not even the type of movie that I would have previously sought out. The only real con I guess I can think of is, is kind of a matter of taste. And as I mentioned before, the music can be pretty dramatic and jarring at times. And there are some more subtle dramatic scenes where the movie kind of comes in super hard and I could see that maybe irritating some people, but I feel like that's done on purpose. I mean, Luca is, as far as I can tell, primarily an artist. And so when I see a bold decision like that made in his movie, I feel like if you're irritated by it, I think that's what he was trying to get from you. So, okay, uh, who do I think Challengers is for? Well, look, in my youth, I have been the broiest of bro movie lovers. And really only in the past few years have I kind of evolved beyond that and gotten more interested in these kind of artistic expressions of film. So if you're not quite there yet, that's fine. Everybody's on their own journey. But if that's you, eh, this might not be a movie for you. The movie is also very much rated R, mainly for sexuality. So if you get a little squirmy around that kind of stuff, or if you're sensitive to that, then also might not be for you. But otherwise, if you just really enjoy genuine human relationship stories, well, hot damn, we got one here. Either way, if Challengers sounds interesting to you, I definitely recommend checking it out this weekend in theaters. If you've seen it already, let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, if you just want to keep up to speed on all the new big movies coming out in theaters and on streaming, make sure you subscribe. All right, my dude, I'll catch you in the next one. Be good.